Hey everybody, Craig here from Sweetwater. Welcome to the last of our four-part series on how to buy a bass you'll love. We're gonna demystify the quest for tone, get back to basics, and most importantly, help you find what matters most to you. I'm a bassist, recording artist, and luthier with 15 years in the industry, and I'm here to help discover what makes the biggest impact for you when looking for a new bass, whether it's your first axe or you're finding that next instrument to round out your low-end arsenal. This series isn't about who plays what or when you need this bass. It's about helping you decide what makes the biggest difference to you. In this episode, we'll be diving into what factors into the feel of an instrument, the main way you interact with it, and what sort of feedback it gives you. We're talking about neck profiles, string action, and bridge spacing. Now, admittedly, these don't factor too much into the tone of the instrument overall, but they do play a major role in the feel of the instrument, which informs your playing. We've all had that experience of picking up an otherwise great instrument at the store, only to put it right back because it didn't feel right. In fact, that's one of the most common reasons people return guitars. So what if we were to break down what contributes to an instrument's feel to help you get an idea of what the instrument is going to feel like once it's already in your hands. We're gonna be talking on neck profiles, string action, and bridge spacing as our big three things to look at. Let's jump right in with neck profiles. These refer to the back of the neck and how they feel in your hand. Now, different manufacturers will have different jargon for their profiles, usually with terms like modern or slim for thinner necks and vintage or classic for thicker neck profiles. While this can be a pretty personal choice, don't get too hung up on necessarily trying to find the thinnest neck you can find right away. This is all part of the equation that builds up to the feel of an instrument and how you approach it. And some folks out there, myself included, like a little more meat on the back of a bass neck. Keeping with the fretting hand, action is a hugely important factor to how the instrument feels when you first pick it up. I have some good news for you though. You can have a bass set up for just about any type of action at any time. Unlike the neck profile, this is one of those things that you shouldn't pay too much attention to when you first pick an instrument up. Assume it'll likely need to be dialed into your taste and realize that it's really easy to do so. We can even have our luthiers set up your instrument to your specifications before we even send it out to you. Now let's talk about action. Literally, how high the strings are off the neck. The higher the action, the more you can dig in when playing without getting fret buzz or overloading your pickups. The flip side of high action is that the higher the strings are, the slower you can be with your fretting hand. I use this analogy with my students all the time. If you're clapping as fast as you can, your hands don't really go too far apart. The farther you spread your hands when you're clapping, the slower you get and the more ridiculous you look. If you're somebody who plays super heavy, maybe using a pick, or maybe looking for a bass to fight back a little bit so you don't overplay and get yelled at by your bandmates for being too fancy and it's not your fault that the original bass line is boring and you're tired of playing eighth notes all night, well, then maybe higher action wouldn't be the worst thing in the world for you. It also gets the strings further away from the pickups, which can give you less string noise and a little rounder sound. On the other side, if you're a slap sorcerer or tap technician, low action may be something great for you. Just like with the clapping analogy, having the strings closer to the board makes some of your melodic gymnastics easier to play. It can also bring some grit to the party when you get it dialed in just right. Last thing we're gonna cover here, and something that I really don't think gets talked about enough, is string spacing. This is something that you should absolutely be aware of your preference and how it affects your playing. String spacing is determined by two main factors, the bridge and your pickups. Some pickups have pole pieces set at very specific intervals, meaning that the strings will need to be spaced the same way in order to run over the center of the magnets. Standard middle of the road string spacing is 19 millimeters. That's 19 millimeters between each string. If you're doing a lot of melodic playing, tighter string spacing, like on this bass, can keep everything close together. This doesn't leave a ton of space for slapping, not that it can't be done, but it can get in the way a little bit. Wider string spacing offers some more room for extended technique, but go too far and you run into our clapping example again. 
It's all about balance and finding out what works best for you. So here we are at last, Bass Behemoths, at the end of the playlist. We've talked about some of the most important considerations to make when buying a bass, whether it's a new instrument or a bass from your buddy down the street. The only remaining question is, how do you know when you need a new bass? Sure, having all this knowledge about how to pick a bass is important, but how do you know when it's time to add to your collection? Consider a few questions to ask yourself when the gear acquisition syndrome strikes. Do I have something about my current bass or basses that's holding me back musically? Do I need to do something that my current bass can't? What role is this gonna play in my collection? And what's my sales engineer's number again? For instance, I have four basses. Each has a very specific role in my arsenal that covers all of my basses for any musical situation I might come across, whether that's a remote tracking gig, a theater pit, a big band, or a Celtic rock show, I've got something that covers all of that. You might have an even more varied need than I do, or maybe you just need something with round wounds and one with flats. Ultimately, that's up to you to decide, and I hope this series has armed you with some of the tools to make an informed decision based on what matters most to you and your ears. If you like this video and have some other ideas for bass content here on the channel, drop me a line in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, start at Sweetwater for all your music instrument and pro audio gear needs.